Hi, this is Valerie Keel, and I'm here to expose on more Canadian human rights abuse violations, particularly in my case. I am going to be exposing the Office of Emergency Management in Toronto in relation to its actions through the Canadian Red Cross as far as uh, people who are displaced um, by the city of Toronto. And it also involved my situation, and I'm going to talk about how that office has conspired to force me to become homeless as of April 25th, which would be in uh, tomorrow, uh, by discontinuing with its services to me through the Red Cross. I have reported in previous videos that I was displaced from my home by the Toronto Fire Services, and that as part of the mandate of the Office of Emergency Management, uh, it is supposed to provide temporary accommodations to persons who have been displaced by the government, in this case by the local government or the city division, the Toronto Fire Services, um, to pro provide them with temporary accommodation until they find permanent housing. Well, this office, after a couple of weeks, have decided not to continue with its assistant to me, uh, and they, they're doing this deliberately. It's part of their overall plan to force me to live on the street, to destabilize me, and to cause harm to me. So they have blocked all of my calls to that office since last week. I've sent in an appeal to them. Um, and of course, today is the 24th of April, and obviously they need to respond to the to appeal ASAP, and they've chosen not to do that because they want that appeal time to run out and then um, for me to be forced out on the street on the April 25th. And so their actions need to be exposed because the government is not allowed to force people from their home and tell them they can't return and not provide them with alternative accommodate, um, accommodation temporarily until they find their own accommodation. And in this case, they want to stop their assistance to me through the Red Cross after a couple of weeks when they have done that for a much longer period with other persons, for instance, people who have been displaced from the TCHC, and I've discussed that in other uh, videos that I've made within the past week or so, and how that office has continued to assist them. But because the overall conspiracy is to cause me harm and to destabilize me, it now wants to discontinue its services that it has been providing to me through the Red Cross and not continue. And of course, that's going to cause me serious harm. And they block all of my um, efforts to contact that office. Uh, Donna Clark, who is a coordinator in that office, I was given her number specifically by a Red Cross manager, uh, Jennifer Pacelli. And she advised me that she had contacted her and let her know that I would be contacting her in regards to providing her with the appeal. And this woman um, was blocked all of my effort to contact her. I did reach her at one point and she threateningly says, this, this is a line for the police. I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> what are you talking about? And she was abusing her power because why would, you know, everybody knows the line for the police. That's, that's not what her number is for. Her number is specifically for the Office of Emergency Management. And that's the number that I, was, I had called. However, she wanted to be very threatening. She didn't want to respond. So as part of not responding, she says, do not call this number. This is only for uh, police line emergency only, as if the police has some special privilege from other EMS services. You know, emergency services is fire, ambulance, and police. And they don't have a specific number for the police with the Office of Emergency Services. And I had to point that out there. I said, uh, do they have a special privilege? Are you saying that to intimidate me so that you can uh, delay my matter further and cause me further harm? And so I had to get back to the Red Cross and said, this woman is blocking my call to her and you need to call her because you've advised me to call her and she's not accepting uh, contact with me. So, and the same thing happened with Loretta Chandler uh, this morning. I was told by someone in that office named Sherry Pollock that the director, who is Loretta Chandler, was not in her office. They don't know when she'll be in her office. And they basically um, was blocking all of my calls to her um, to follow up as to what happened to the appeal I'd sent in, uh, which I'd sent to the manager, Brad Iyer. 
um, in regards to the date that they set on April 25th to discontinue their services through the Red Cross. And so basically, you can see the conspiracy going on with the local, Can the unit, local Canadian government through its municipality and with that specific agency. What I had to do this morning was to make other calls and I was told that actually the director, Loretta Chandler, was in her office today, but she was in a meeting until 12 noon with the working group, which is also part of the overall plan uh, that works with the Office of Emergency Services with, in regards to displaced persons. So she was probably in there talking about how effective her office has been in assisting displaced persons when at the very same time that very office was working to cause me harm by discontinuing its service to me as of April 25th. Um, there's a bigger conspiracy in this because even where I'm being temporarily housed right now, I go through 24 hours harassment um, and it's all orchestrated I believe, by the police and CSIS and all of these government agencies, they're all working together. It's part of the persecution that I'm facing from the Canadian government. And they're all working together to force me out of my home, to destabilize me. And that's been a tactic that they have used for many years. And they continue to use that tactic because no other international agencies has intervened and says you cannot continue to abuse her rights in this way. So it has continued. And unfortunately for them, I contacted some outside sources and I've asked for intervention to be done in this case because the actions of that office, the Office of Emergency Management, would be harmful to me. And so I am waiting to see what is going to happen in regards to that assistance that I've requested. And, but basically, I am here to expose corruption, corruption by the Canadian government, how there is no transparency as far as any particular division in that government, when it wants to act corrupt, and the people there are not taking responsibility for their action. There is no agency put in place that I'm aware of other than the Office of the Ombudsman, which itself is corrupt, and I've reported on them in the past. So individuals in those divisions and that those divisions directly can act corrupt and they can do things that are unlawful and all kinds of things and get away with their corruption and this is the order of the day in Canada unfortunately where corruption prevails both at the local levels of government as well as all the way to the top the federal levels um, this is part of the persecution that I'm going to as I've stated earlier and that's why the harassment from that's being carried out against me, um, not just to agitate me, excuse me, but also to cause me psychological harm. And that's why that's going on around the clock at the, temp at the accommodation that I have right now, which ended tomorrow, because the Office of Emergency Service will not continue to um, provide that service to me on, after April 25th. And so I have to now make this situation public because what they're doing is extremely corrupt. They are providing services to other displaced people, including people from the Toronto Community Housing. A lot of them have been displaced. They continue to provide uh, services to these people and to make sure that they get permanent housing and they trans transition from the temporary accommodation to permanent housing. They're not doing that in my case. What they want to do is to stop their services to me and to force me out on the street and not to help me beyond that date. And even in my appeal, I, I put the request that, you know what, you really can't get a place on the, on the 25th. The earliest anyone is going to get a place is on the, the beginning of the month. And I've asked them to extend it to the beginning of the month or even longer if they can do that. And they should be able to do that, but at least to the beginning of the month. And that office is blocking all of my effort as far as um, responding to that appeal. So honest to God, if they force me out on the street tomorrow, it is now a legal issue uh, because the government cannot displace people. You know, it's a violation on the international laws. And if it is done on an individual basis, those laws should still apply. Okay, because someone have their home and now you're telling them we're going to displace you. You can't go back for safety reasons or whatever the case is and we're not going to provide you with assistance in the meantime. They're not allowed to do that. Okay, that's causing very serious harm to someone, anyone in that case. 
And so you have this corrupt city division, which is doing that in my case. And I'm exposing them here uh, on my blog and through this video. Um, Donna Clark, who was one of the um, persons in that office, as I mentioned, in regards to her actions, very intimidating and threatening, and also basically um, refusing to carry out her duty. She knew that by not accepting um, contact with me, that's going to delay my appeal further. And she purposely did that, so that the appeal would be delayed. And of course, if the appeal is delayed, of their decision is delayed, then the, obviously that's going to um, harm me, cause me harm. And also, they further delay the matter by blocking all um, calls to me, calls to that office from me to find out what the status is of the appeal. They've done that today. Um, so I've left um, messages to Loretta Chandler, who's the director in that office, and I uh, want to hear back from her. And these people think I'm joking. You know, they, they think I'm joking as far as them violating my rights and saying that, well, you know what? we can do whatever we want we can force you out of your home and we don't have to do anything beyond that and you know yeah you can pursue this civil in a civil court because it's causing you harm right it 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 it, it, it um disrupt your 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 life your the fundamental ways of how you were living and reduce your life to god knows what and they're not allowed to do that. no one is allowed to do that no one is allowed to do that and so you can pursue that legally but for the immediate help, for the immediate duty that you're supposed to do, um, that's something that has to be addressed now, okay? Not a, a lawsuit in the future is not gonna address the immediate concerns and the immediate um, uh, situation that I've been put in by that, the, the city of Toronto. And so anyone who wants to um, contact me in, in regards to this, you're feel, feel free to do so. My number is 416-604-6924. You can also contact me with your comments. I'm also on Google Plus, and of course, um, you know, I thank those who um, send their words of encouragement and support to me. I appreciate that, and of course, being a writer and blogger and exposing human rights abuse in Canada, this is what I go through as a means of punishment and as an, a reprisal action by that government by conspiring against me and taking actions against me that would definitely cause me harm, especially psychological harm, because that's been its agenda in, um, in the, from day one. So this is Valerie Guillaume reporting about the Office of Emergency Management and how um, it is not following its mandate as far as assisting uh, persons who have been displaced by the City of Toronto. Um, it's not following through with its mandate in this case involving me and its actions should be exposed and it's not allowed to do that and it wants its actions to be covered up and for no one to know that you know it's it's been doing what it's been doing in my case and obviously it shouldn't be allowed to do that not to me not to anybody really you know the, the, the government can't disrupt people's life and said well now we wash our hands off the situation you're on your own and create unnecessary um, burden on you where that didn't exist before that was specifically created by the government, the local government, through its um, plans that it implemented through uh, whatever city divisions carry out those uh, displacements. Sometimes it's done by the fire services, sometimes it's done by the uh, municipal licensing, sometimes it's done by the, um, the building division, whatever the case, if you're living in a building and it's rendered unsafe, any one of those divisions can um, have you removed by their own bylaws and, and, and whatever. So that was done in my case in regards to the building that I was living in. And now the city do not want to take responsibility to provide me with the temporary housing that I need uh, so I can transition to uh, private accommodation. Because as I stated, I do not qualify for any of the shelters because of my animal and things like that. And um, they're not assisting me beyond April 25th. And they should not be allowed to do that because they're the one who have uh, caused me to be displaced. So this is Valerie Guillaume reporting on uh, corruption um, at the local level with the Canadian government for my blog, Canada Human Rights Abuse Exposed.